Um, Rodney Stoke, just parked around the corner there. Um, this is the church. Welcome to St. St. Leonard's. Might be open, might not. No. Oh, yes, it is open. Sometime with a bit of persistence. So this will be my third church. This will be my third church today. And uh, I won't be doing Nyland Mound. I've decided it's too much to do in one day. I'm doing the video first in case somebody comes in. So this is Rodney Stoke. A nice cap fits in the font, isn't it? It's a great big gravestone slab, isn't it? It's probably got a sword on it somewhere, I should think, by the look of it. If you threw water on that, yeah, you can see the sword going down. Ancient grave slab, 12th, 13th century, grade listed. This ancient grave slab is the oldest monument associated with our church. For well over 100 years, following the late Victorian expansion of the church, it was propped up against a churchyard wall at the eastern end of the church, as shown in the photograph. Prior to that, it had been covered in a double grave under the floor of the chancel. This sketch was drawn by... <sighs> Buckler in 1844 and included in the book of Sir Stephen Glynn's Church Notes of Somerset, published by the Somerset Record Society. So you can see there, that's where it was in the chancel. The grave slab was identified and dated by Mr. and Mrs. Gittos in 2009, following which it was given grade 2 status for its age and its rarity as a double gravestone. It is carved from Draycott marble, which does not weather too well. The Kiddo's letter can be seen on our website, www.stlinusrodneystoke.org. Given its age, it is possible that the slab covered the burial of two members of the Gifford family, who were lords of the manor of Stoke Gifford, as the village was named in those days. It became Rodney Stoke when the last of the Giffords, Maud, married Sir Richard Rodney. Press once, light will return after a few minutes. Oh, I say, yeah. That's lit up really well, isn't it? If I go back a bit. And the Giffards, I got a feeling the Giffards are in my family tree. Everyone's related to me. <laughs> yeah, we've got Giffards. We've got a Giffard who married a De Lucy and all that back in time. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. I don't think that was here. Or I didn't... Maybe the church wasn't always open. I didn't notice it. Yeah, that's really good, that is. I'll have to come take a picture after I've done all the... So this is an ancient church. Yes, yeah, Stoke Gifford. Yes, of course. Yeah, we have Giffards in the tree. We definitely do. I don't know if what relationship they are but we have got them <sighs> yeah I don't know if there's a booklet or not <sighs> Thanksgiving window Oh yeah, it does look like this. For 30p you can get a little a little thing here. <sighs> in proud and grateful memory of the men of this parish who fell in World War I, nine, in World War 1939 to 1945. David Cooper, John Glover Price, Dennis H. W. Thayer, James Williams. They died that we might live. Yeah, I can't remember seeing that big stone before, you know. I'd have to find the... I'd have to find the video. 
another lovely stained glass window there. Um, the screen, the Holy Rood screen, whatever you call it. Up there, and another lovely carved structure as well. You can always get a really good image when you come up here. I'm doing the video first as usual um, because um, yeah this shows you I think this is all the people that died it's like um, grave books that's really nice to have that there isn't it I'm only just remembering all this you know it just shows it's been a while And here we have a knight with his dog at his feet. Sword broken a bit there. Yes, it's a while since I've been in here, but I know I've done it in the past. I know I have. The Rodney Chapel. What I'll do is... Um, I'll have to photograph this. Sir John Rodney, Sir Thomas. Um, yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to um, photograph everything. Sometimes people put little plaques. I mean, it's probably in this leaflet, but I haven't got my glasses. But uh, we'll just do what we can. I think it's a bloke. Looks like a very young man, doesn't it? Very young face. Quite small. There's another little sword, look. Yeah, I have been in here before, it's true. And I would have had information about all these various people. Made of marble, that is, isn't it? Here is deposited the mortal part of George Rodney Esquire and the last son of the Sir Edward Rodney Knight, the 25th Earl Mayor of this family. He was born 1629, died 1651, quite young then. He is defended by his father of noble family of Seymour's and by the mother of the noble family of Howard's. Oh, right, two famous families, Seymour and, ha and Howard's then. He was pious, chaste, charitable, and penitent in a assurance of a joyful resurrection. I'll take pictures of all this in a minute. Yeah, I remember this. Like this great big memorial plaque to the family. Yeah. I remember now there was a lot to do here. No, we've got ancestors who would have looked and dressed like this, by the way. Once again, I'm doing the video while there's no one about. I keep meaning to look up this stuff as well. Meet the Rodneys, it says there. Thomas Rodney, 1437 to 1471. That's quite an early one, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite an early one. Until 1279, the village was in the hands of the Giffards and was called Stoke Giffard. Then Sir Richard Rodney of Backwell married Maud, the last of the Giffards, and he became Lord of the Manor. The village name changed to Stoke Rodney and the, then to its present name of Rodney Stoke. The branch of the Rodney family made the village their ancestral home for almost 400 years. Then in 1661, George, the only surviving male heir of Sir Edward Rodney, died before his father. On Edward's death, his daughter Anna inherited the estate, moving out of the village on her marriage to Sir Thomas Bridges of Kensham. This brought to an end the Rodney family presence in Rodney Stoke. A church has stood on the present site since at least Norman times, but it was extensively repaired and expanded in the late 
15th century by Sir John Rodney. It was Sir Edward who installed the rude screen in the church in 1625 and provided the altar table in 1634. <sighs> yes, there's a lot about that. I'm going to take photographs of all this because this might be new since I've been here before as well. The conservation project, the community involvement, all that sort of thing. Here lies the body of Edward Rodney, late of Rodney Stoke, in the county of Somerset, Knight, who deceased the 25th day of May, 1657. Here lies Catherine Rodney, who died the 4th of Feb, 1704, aged 73. Here lies the body of something Francis Rodney, the wife of Sir Edward Rodney, Knight, who deceased the 3rd day of August, 1659. Yeah, I remember all this now. I'm going to take photographs, folks. Hello?